Here's a happy family. Must be a good program. For generations, we've stared at the telly. It served us well. By wearing the helmet, you're able to see it in 3D. By the 80s, the first very clunky virtual reality. Move around and up comes my flash new table. There it is. All that for a flickering pencil drawing. Today, for as little as a tenner, a box for a smartphone can take you to places you only dreamed of. This is incredible. It's beyond the front row seat. I'm in the orchestra. And the most amazing thing is, I'm a ghost. They can't see me, but they're the real ones in this world. The possibilities are endless. Once a domain for geeky gamers, designers are now asking what the virtual world can do for mankind. That's amazing. Yeah. Tonight, Tech City hosts the charity sector. Rather than appeal to donors in their living rooms, take them to a war zone. Our neighborhood was heavily bombarded in the last war. What we find with VR is that when people put on a headset, even if it's a story they're not particularly interested in, they care about that person and they care about that child more than they, they would do if they just watched a film. And we think that's because that child is looking into their eyes, that child is telling them their story in the most personal way possible. My mother makes sure we are all together for dinner. As charities take their first virtual steps across London, the medical world has become the biggest user of VR after gaming. War and terror often leave soldiers with post-traumatic stress disorder. Someone with post-traumatic stress disorder normally tries to block out these images, but if you can focus on the horror, if you can actually hold these, these pictures, these distressing pictures in your mind, then it seems that the brain is able to recode them as an event that happened in the past. And until that process happens, the brain keeps on responding as though this is something that is happening now. Through virtual reality, we can actually make those traumatic situations much more real. Patients confront their nightmares in VR with medical supervision. It was the success of this treatment in America that led UCL to think VR could help depression. <laughs> we get them to embody themselves within that crying child avatar. And, and hear their own words uh, and see their own compassionate gestures. It's really upset you, hasn't it? Well, VR is helping the person to go through that process of making it very vivid. <laughs> in the group of 15 people that we tested, we found a significant improvements in level of depressed mood. Welcome, everybody, um, to the London Independent Hospital, virtual reality surgery. For generations, the only way for young surgeons to learn was to watch over the shoulder. Now, virtual reality is putting them center stage. So can we have a knife, please? Last year, Shafi Ahmed broadcast the world's first virtual reality surgery. Now, medical students around the world join his operations. You are the controller of the image in front of you. So, for example, if you want specific training in, say, the stitching of the bow, you could literally focus, zoom into that bit and watch that. You can see how different the colon is. 5,000 miles away in Dhaka, Bangladesh, these students are watching the operation coming live from Stepney. Feel free to ask questions on, on our Twitter feed. We know that there's a huge shortage of surgeons around the world. We know there's inequity in healthcare, and this allows that to be addressed. It used to be that you look over the surgeon's shoulder, but now you just have one camera, you're looking everywhere. It's not you doing it, but it feels like it very much so. Now Shafi's team are trying to bring virtual touch to the sound and vision. My uh, vision is that we have something called a virtual surgeon. So imagine this, you put the headset on, you're suddenly immersed in this operating theatre that's lifelike, but not real. You can pick up a scalpel and actually you can feel the scalpel blade and actually make a cut into this um, uh, virtual human being and actually demonstrate that you can operate and practice simulation that's really lifelike. And that's what we're heading towards. Others have been wondering how VR might help patients. Mother of two, Sarah, now has motor neurone disease. A film producer wondered if VR could carry her from a world where she can't move into one 
where she can. Today was amazing. I love technology and I think virtual reality has so much potential for disabled people. When we tried it, it was, it was just, just the most amazing experience. You could feel the, uh, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and it, it was just so special. And I thought straight away, I thought there's something in this. I'm just going to put these headphones on. You. Now they're taking VR even further. This is Royal Trinity Hospice in Clapham. Faced with death, Hollywood would have us believe we tick off everything on our bucket list. In reality, weakness often makes that impossible. I cannot walk now because of the cancer spreading. You know, you didn't think you were going to have cancer and die after a year. Yeah, I think it would take a bit longer. You alright, Susie? I'm fine, thank you. Hello, my love. I'm just curious. So this is virtual reality. Mm -hmm. So what we were hoping to do was be able to give you an experience. Mm -hmm. How does that sound? Mum has announced many times, you know, I, I'd like to go back and she can't so, ever go. What are you thinking? What do you think of this guy? Nothing, I must, you must be mad. Yeah. <laughs> Susie's about to be taken back to Jerusalem, where she grew up. We're in Jerusalem, we can see the, the, the mosque, as if you're there. How does that well, feel, Susie? Fantastic. <laughs> that is fantastic going on like that. Here at Trinity, we're always looking to try and improve patient care. And you know, one of our values is innovation. And when we saw this, it was like, wow, this is innovation with a capital I. So we're looking to uh, put together a research and a study. Next stop, Susie witnesses planet Earth in three minutes. Goodness gracious, all these, all these high-rise buildings. Oh, we're in Venice now. <laughs> That's lovely. Virtual reality. My word. Oh, there's a lion there. Goodness gracious. A huge lion, too. Can you touch it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're already way beyond tomorrow's world. And in Tech City, they claim it's an adventure only just beginning.